Hey guys, welcome back, it's Rick here. And on today's video, we're gonna give you a full tour of our new Airstream Airport pole barn that we just had constructed. We're also gonna share with you some of the considerations and challenges that we had to address during the build, provide you with a full cost breakdown in case you decide you wanna build something similar to this, as well as share with you some of our final thoughts. So stick around. Hey guys, welcome back. So if you're new to this channel here, I just wanna provide you a quick little background about Lisa and I. So prior to buying this property, Lisa and I were full-time travelers in our Airstream. We had just recently retired and decided to hit the road and we had been traveling for over a year just touring throughout the United States. We were seeing family and friends, going to locations we had never been to before, but we also had another purpose in our travels. Because we had just retired, we wanted to identify a place where we could then buy a home-based property. So long story short, we ended up settling in on uh, South Carolina. We liked the location, it's close to the ocean, it's close to the mountains, it just worked for us. So once we bought the property, we had to then identify a location where we wanted to park the Airstream. By happenstance, the previous owner actually had a shed located in that exact spot. So, you know, that was our first obstacles. We had to get, get a mover to come in and relocate our shed for us uh, so we could then use that area for the Airstream. Once we were able to find somebody that would do the work at a reasonable price on the timeline that we wanted it done, it was a pretty simple process. The guys came out used their equipment and relocated the shed here on the property, which was uh, really the first step in, in our planning and preparation. So once we got the shed moved, we really were faced with three options on how we wanted to move forward with the project. Option one was to hire a contractor and have him do all of the, the work for us. Uh, that would be from the site prep, to the build, to the concrete, to the electrical, uh, and then putting in the back driveway. Option two was, I serve as the contractor and I go out and find the various uh, companies that would do the work for us, save a little bit of money doing it that way, but that puts a lot of the burden on me to go ahead and um, try to find and get the quotes for all of those different uh, uh, projects that I needed to get completed. And the third option was a DYI option where we just do everything ourselves. We rent the equipment, we do all of the site prep, we do all of the build, we do the concrete, and so forth so on and after some consideration you know we you look at option one being the most expensive option three being the cheapest but the most labor intensive we ended up going with option two it was kind of in the middle ground it wasn't the cheapest but by far was uh, a lot less labor intensive than trying to do everything diy and the reason why we didn't do diy as well is because i don't have a lot of that equipment i don't have the experience to be able to do some of those uh, projects on my own and could I have learned them yes but you know time would have been significantly increased me trying to learn how to do a lot of those uh, different trades and so forth so option two is the direction we went so once we decided on the scope of the work that we wanted to have completed Lisa and I sat down and we kind of came up with a, a rough budget of uh, what we thought it was going to cost we started then collecting different estimates and then ultimately hired uh, the respective contractors to do the work. Now, when talking about a budget, I will tell you, whatever you think that budget is, you, you need to make sure you add probably 10 to 20% to that budget because there are gonna be things that are gonna end up costing more or you're gonna make changes to the scope of work and so forth. Um, so we kinda knew what our budget target was going to be, but we also had money set aside uh, for any of those expenses that were going to exceed the budgeted amount that we had planned for. So once we got all of the subcontractors hired and then got the uh, work schedule locked in with each of them, then the first step uh, for the build was to go ahead and get the site prep completed. And I think I'd mentioned earlier that we had hired Southern Ridge Excavation, a local company, to come out here and do the work, and they did a fantastic job. So, you know, this terrain or this property that we live on here isn't necessarily the flattest. It's, it's got a little bit of a slope to it. It's, it's pretty heavily wooded. Had to have several trees removed. We had to have this area leveled uh, to the proper grade, as well as uh, for the driveway that was gonna come in from the back of the, the property, we had to have a tree removed over there as well. So in total, we ended up having to have several, like I said, several trees cleared, level the ground, several loads of clay sand brought in. 
uh, and then once all of that was brought in, had to be leveled out to grade and then compacted. And all of that work took about three days and with a total cost of $5,805. Uh, so that was a little bit more than what I was anticipating. We were thinking around the four to $5,000 range, but uh, in all fairness to the subcontractor, we did have a few additional trees removed. So each one of those were additional costs. Uh, so they cut them down, chopped them up, hauled them off, and that was about $350, $375 per tree in addition that we had removed. So, uh, you know, th those are the things that I talk about in your budget. Just plan for those things that are going to come up that you're going to need to go ahead and take care of. So once we had the site prep completed, we had about a month before the uh, builder could come out and do the actual build on the property because he had some other projects that he was working on. So once the crew got here on site and uh, got all their materials delivered, it only took them about four days uh, to build this structure. Uh, again, you have to have inspections come out, so that always delays your build time a little bit, but uh, everything went uh, according to time and plan and schedule. Uh, didn't have any real issues with that. Uh, we got it built in those four days, and then the following week, I had that same contractor coordinate with a subcontractor to have the concrete come out and get poured. That was another three-day process. You know, they came out and did the concrete prep. We had to wait a day for the inspector to come out and uh, sign off on the inspection, and then on the third day, we had the concrete come out on an early morning, cold morning, and uh, pour the concrete. And uh, in total, so the build time and the concrete time took a two week period, but the actual time on site for the work uh, was about uh, six to seven days. The construction for this building, as well as the concrete, this includes the concrete, was $24,436. Now, now the concrete included a, an, an additional apron on the front of the building that tied into our existing driveway. So that's not just a 24 by 36 uh, four inch concrete pad. That also includes a little bit of extra on the front that tied into our existing driveway. We went with a pole barn construction. We had looked at some different types of construction, some of the galvanized steel structures, and uh, just we, we just really liked the uh, the pole barn construction we thought that it was going to give us the most options in the future if we ever decided we wanted to completely enclose in this structure it would be relatively easy to go ahead and finish bringing the walls down closing that in and i could put two probably 12 by 12 garage doors on both ends and then be able to have in a completely enclosed shop and park the airstream in there uh, you can see here behind me so the building itself is 36 feet long by 24 feet wide by 12 feet high. It, it is big enough that it allows us to park both of the Airstream and our truck underneath the, uh, the shelter and keep them out of the elements and so forth. We went with that size uh, for a couple of reasons. You know, if you go bigger, of course, it's gonna cost more. And also it was just gonna be a little bit uh, more challenging to go with a bigger building on the property without having to have even more trees uh, removed. Our Airstream is a 27-foot international, so a 36-foot shelter we thought was adequate. Even if we someday upgraded to, say, a 30-foot, it was still going to provide enough uh, overhead cover that we could park a 30-foot Airstream in there. So once we had the uh, building built and the concrete pad poured, then I went back to my excavator and rehired him to come out and put in our back driveway. So the back driveway... Uh, extends from the road that's on the side of our property and is about 250 feet long. We ended up having a 14 foot wide driveway put in. I know standard driveway is probably about 12 foot, but we want a little bit wider because we're gonna be bringing in the Airstream. And because we're gonna be driving through some trees, I didn't want to have any clearance issues. Uh, he put in four to five inches of uh, crusher run gravel after he prepped the, uh, the driveway. So it took him several days to haul in all the gravel. He ended up bringing in about 70 tons, 140,000 pounds of gravel. And then once he got it here on site, then of course he had to level it out and, and smooth out the driveway. And then once all of that was done, then he brought in the compactor and got it all compacted down. I tell you, that was probably one of the best investments that we made on this property was the ability to have 
uh, a back driveway so it allows us to pull in the Airstream, unhitch, and then when we want to depart we hitch up here and then we pull out through the front driveway. By far the easiest in and out uh, that I could have asked for onto this property. For the driveway, it cost $11,686. Now, let me caveat that. The actual cost of this driveway was the back driveway itself was about $9,000. We did also have him resurface the front driveway because it had uh, quite a bit of wear and tear on the property. So we wanted to go ahead and address that. As well as you can see here behind me, we had some topsoil brought in so then I could plant some rye grass here to prevent any erosion until summertime and then I can replant with some Bermuda grass. So those costs are a little inflated because of the additional work that wasn't necessarily part of the scope of this build, but was something that directly impacts uh, the build in, in uh, other ways. Okay, so moving on, after we got the driveway put in back here, then I was able to then get our contractor in uh, to go ahead and start doing some of the electrical work for us. Now, this was probably one of the more challenging areas of trying to get some estimates. I called several electricians and either they wouldn't answer the phone or if they answered their phone, and said they would come out and, and give me an estimate they wouldn't show up. It took me probably a couple of months to actually find an electrician that uh, would do the work at a reasonable price on the time that I needed it done by. One of the things, one of the challenges I had was where my main panel was here on the property was about 150 feet from where this shelter was built. And when I got an estimate on what it would cost to trench that, uh, you know, 24 inches so we could do direct berry wire, it came back between $1,000 and $1,400 just to trench uh, that uh, piece of property here so we could put the wire in. The wire itself cost uh, about $450 for the wire that we needed. Um, so to save some money, I went ahead and bought the wire myself and then I hand dug this trench 150 feet to help save and, and kind of cut back on some of our expenses. Once we got that taken care of, and I also bought the conduit that you know I installed here so we could run the wire up uh, underneath the concrete pad before they poured the concrete, that, that got some of the initial rough electrical wiring put in. What I needed then was the electrician to come in with his expertise and put in a main lug panel here. We have a 100 amp uh, breaker in there. I also had him wire in a 30 amp RV plug as well as two 20 amp breakers to go to some 110 receptacles, as well as some shop lights that I had installed, as well as some motion sensing lights. The total time for the electrical work, including my, my sweat equity of digging the trench and bearing the wire, and then the electrician coming out here, was about five days, five to six days of doing that at a total cost of uh, $1,304. So moving forward, we do have a couple more projects we want to go ahead and get completed. As you can see here behind me, we don't have any gutters up on the building. We want to go ahead and get some of those installed for water management and to help uh, prevent any erosion here on the property. Also, you can see the post behind me. They, they haven't been painted. And we're going to wait until the springtime, allow the pressure-treated lumber to continue to dry out, and we're going to end up painting those black to match the, the black trim that's on the building. But other than that, I think we are 95% complete with everything we want on this uh, building and uh, very happy with the way it's turned out. So uh, we'll go ahead and wrap this up and give you some of our final thoughts. Okay guys, so before we provide you with our final thoughts, I wanted to bring Lisa out here so I could kind of reveal what the total cost uh, was for this build. <laughs> um, you know, so if you've been following along with a pencil and paper, you probably kind of have a rough estimate of, of how much money we spent. But the total cost of this build from everything from the site prep to the concrete to the build to the electrical to the driveway ended up being $43,231. Woo! You went over budget just a little bit. <laughs> We probably did, but we did, as I'd mentioned, had some additional work done, some other trees removed. We did. We had the front driveway resurfaced. We did. Um, I actually had some more electrical work done than what I originally had planned on doing. Yes. But it's all an investment, and um, yes, I don't think I is. would change anything. No, I would not either. Any other thoughts? No, I think we did a really good job, or they did a really good job, and you yeah. did a really good job planning it. 
we're really happy with it and hopefully you found this uh, to be interesting if you're especially if you're planning on building something similar for your RV or for your Airstream but also if you have any questions or comments leave those in the comments section below I'll do my very best to answer those and if we don't hear from you hopefully we'll see you down the road see you down the road